Okay, time to let in everybody to the room. Hello, everybody. Hi. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, we're gonna we're gonna wait a, a few minutes, guys, until everybody will join. Uh, it normally takes five six minutes. You can say hi to one another, and uh, in the meantime, I, I will set up the stream on Facebook. We're also gonna be live on Facebook. Is an Archil right there? Can I see you? Archil, are you there? Hi. Oh, so nice to see you after so long, Archil. It's I been really you. long. I know, I know, I know. Yeah. It's been really long. I've been awesome. going through all your uh, posts and all, and I miss a couple of photographs that I think we've missed. You know, my photograph with the kids, my daughter's yeah. photographs, they're all missing. <laughs> I'm coming back to Delhi. I'm coming back to Delhi. Lovely to see you. Lovely to see you. And I'm, I'm still struggling with my photo, Shika. <laughs> This this whole session you will you will you will get somewhere for sure, for sure. Actually, just change your name. It's Adit written. That's how I recognize it was you. It's Adit written. Just change your name to Achal so everybody knows that's you. What do I do? Go to participants uh, and change your name to Achal. Okay, hold on. Oh, Achha, I don't know why. Yeah, it says Adit, but I know Adit, so that's why. I... I, <laughs> I realize it was you. Uh, I don't think, I think I've logged on to, uh, because Adit uses my mobile. That's okay, so that's it's, okay. That's all right. It's just people who want to address you, they can know your are That's it. Yeah, because I think Adit, Adit uses Zoom more than me. <laughs> yeah. I, I hope, see, even I am logged in as Rohit Anand. What am I telling you? Because it's called Rohit's name. I have to change mine. Sorry. I know, I know. That's, Miss, my 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 son has grown up. Who you've been taking? In fact, you know the other day, I think you, I saw some post with the kids with the water playing in the water and another. I want right. so much to put Adit's photograph in that. Next post, Adit's photo. That's my favorite anyway. So he's all grown yeah, up. Yeah, you know you you can click those in those bathtubs with yes, the yes. With, with those bubbles and everything. Yes, so they're yes, still yes. there. You know, those are still there in the. They're on my in, list in, of in favorite room. pictures. And they're on my list. Yeah, other Very good. As well. Yeah, lovely. I can see you. Are you are you there as well, Gauri? Are you guys from Bangalore? I think these people have joined in. It will be lovely to meet all of you. In yeah. Hi, Shikha. Hey. Hi, hello. Hi, everyone. Hello, everybody. Hi, Mike. Hello. All right, the crew is growing. By the way, guys, yes. we are now live on Facebook, so you can wave to the whole world. <laughs> Monica, hi. Hi, Monica's there. Lovely to see you. Hi, Melanie. Hi. hi. More people. Oh, wow. People are keep on coming in. Hopefully, we're not going to break Zoom today. <laughs> Lovely to see you. Hi, everyone. Awesome, awesome. Okay, okay. Uh, Nadia, I'm gonna also make you a co-host, so in case if, you, if somebody else will be coming later on, maybe you can help out with, uh, with admitting people, okay? All right, um, I'm just gonna have to tell you that I'm charging per hour, <laughs> so. <laughs> like Mike has not heard you, Nadia. Mike. Oh, Mike. he didn't hear me. I'm just gonna scream from the top because he's downstairs. <laughs> yeah, because he's the next door. Yeah, he's either way, <laughs> he's not gonna escape this. <laughs> yes. Okay. I, I pay. I, I pay with pancakes. Is okay. <laughs> yes, that would be great. <laughs> Hello, everyone. All right. All right, everything is set, guys. So now we have five past uh, five past nine, and I think we can slowly start. Especially that I wanted to introduce our guest today. Uh, so you are all here to hear from Shika Kana, a photographer from over twenty years right now, 
was uh, a lot to share, not only about photography, but also about uh, the science behind the visuals, behind the picture, you know? Science and art, I would say, in this particular case. So I've, I've had a chance to uh, work with uh, Shika for, for quite some time right now, not only as a, as a, a coach, uh, but also as a student of her, because uh, as you know, we're running an education center for our refugees. And I've been, I've been taking like external lessons from, from Shika, <laughs> giving me tips uh, on all different uh, occasions, how I can make my photos, my pictures a bit better. And I have to say that after listening to these, to these like really small tips, really, I, I, I realized, you know what? I, I really look at these things differently right now. It makes a lot of, uh, a lot of sense to pay attention to these details that she can see that we don't see normally because once you put something out there to the world on social media you want to you want to look different you want people to see there's something special right in, in this thing that you have and and if you if you put on some, on something on instagram or facebook and people are scrolling through these thousands and thousands of photos there is something in in the photo they stop right and the thing is that chica can see that you know like she knows which photo people will stop and which they will just scroll through right so this is sort of like a superpower that everybody would like to have am i right or not <laughs> give me some thumbs up if you would like to have that superpower to know which which picture people will stop on <laughs> <laughs> All right, that would be a really good thing to, to know. So this is, this is definitely something that we will um, learn about today. I'm not saying that it's going to be like that, that you just know that, but you will have a, um, a breakdown how to see different things from a little bit different perspective and how to make them better with the simple tricks. Okay, so before Shika will uh, go with her presentation, I actually wanted to show you something. I'm going to share my screen for a second, okay, uh, and uh, go to my little collection over here. So these are photos of uh, of the children from our center, uh, and I'm. Th this is all these these pictures are made with the phone, okay. After listening to Shika's uh, tips on composition and light, I was playing with these pictures, but they are not edited yet. So I'm showing this to you today uh, as a raw version, but later on, I'm, I'm planning to uh, set like a series of sessions of uh, not sessions, maybe a post that will show you before and after, uh, like a little bit, little editing uh, part. So you can see over here. Enter on the next. Yes, sir. Mike, you're mute. Can you put everybody on mute, Mike? Oh, is it okay now? Can you hear me? Yeah, you can. Uh, okay. Right. So, like I like I mentioned, those those are my uh, raw pictures, all made from by by my phone. And then the second the second part of this whole journey will be editing those without spending you know days on it and making them unique for social media, okay? So in today's session, guys, you, you're here for two reasons, okay? One is I want, to, I want you to, to realize that photo, visual, is the first hook for everything. It's the hook for your text, is the hook for your story, is the hook for your business, is the hook for everything else that happens on social media. If your visual is not good, it doesn't matter how good is your story. It doesn't matter how, how good is your offer. It doesn't really matter what you have, uh, what you prepared and how amazing you are because people will not pay attention to anything else if they don't like the, the first impression. If they don't have this need to stop and read, okay? So that is why I feel like this session 
is, is a foundation for everything when it comes to social media. And I would like you to definitely have pens and, and, and papers, take some notes. I'll be putting some notes on my own in the chat and I would like you to do the same thing because sometimes some information, uh, some information if, if, if heard from a different perspective or seen from a different perspective will give us a better understanding. So do share, do utilize the chat room and share with us what you understand, what you've heard, okay? Be active, stay engaged, so then the knowledge will stay with you for a longer time, okay? So with that being said, the second reason why you're here, we're also gonna give you some bonuses, okay? At the end of the session, uh, Shika prepared a really nice gift that will make certain things easier. It's gonna be a list of things that uh, you possibly need, like gadgets or, or apps, right that that might be useful in preparing your photos okay and from my side uh, i feel like the foundation for all the photos of, on on facebook and on social media is it comes down to the psychology of the face all right your face is your business card your face is your brand okay so the way how you take photos of yourself and how you present your face on social media is very important. And so I prepared a little session for you that I will give to every single one of you who stay until the end of the session and have fun together with us. So with that being said, I'm giving the microphone to Shika. Enjoy the session, everybody. Thank, thank you, Mike. Um, thank you everyone for making uh, it here. Um, before, before I start sharing uh, the presentation, um, you know, the chat, the chat box is active. Please post question. Tell me to slow down if you think you're not grasping something because the minute I, I cross over the introduction part, which would not be more than five to seven minutes, I will start talking about what is needed to start making these great pictures. And um, yes, whoever stays till the end, we have, uh, we have bonuses to share. And these are lists of apps that you need for phones to make your phone uh, you know, picture a little better or tools or gadgets that you need. So I would be sharing that once the session ends with people who are here. Um, I'm just gonna share my screen. Just give me one second and I'm gonna start. Uh, just give me a second. Okay. Um, am I audible to everyone? Uh, Mike, I can't see anything, only my screen right now. Am I audible yes, to Yes, I can hear you well, but uh -huh. if you guys can, if you could type in the chat, if you can hear Shika well, and if you can see the screen right now and her presentation, so we know that everything works properly, it will be great, okay? And uh, Mike, I think I can't access the chat. In qu any questions, just uh, stop me and I will try to answer it as, it, as and when we do. No right? worries, I'll be, I'll be ha right. having a look at great. that. Great. Um, so learning how to take great pictures for better social media presence. Um, you know, COVID has brought us to a point where uh, pictures and online and social media content has become the most important things for a lot of us. Uh, and um, like me, I was not very active in Facebook uh, before COVID times. Now I'm more active in Facebook because that's the, that's the next step that we are taking to come online. So I, I thought of get, bringing this uh, skill to people uh, about uh, how to take great pictures from phone because you can't hire photographers all the time. Um, phones are there with us and a lot of times we just lost uh, with how to take these pictures. Uh, so just a little about me. Uh, essentially, I think I always introduce myself as a mom of two kids first and uh, also, I'm a photographer for 20 years. Incidentally, India's first baby and child photographer. So for 20 years, I've been um, taking family pictures uh, and uh, uh, you know, uh, I've been teaching photography, uh, iPhone photography for almost six years. And I also uh, mentored some photographers here in India. So that's a very short introduction about me because I don't want to take too much time about uh, this whole thing. I've studied, um, 
uh, I, from ICPP, which is an international college for professional photography for three years. And I became a baby and child photographer in this country. So essentially a portrait photographer, shot a lot of artists. So I'm quickly going to go through the slides of work that I've done in the past so that you know what kind of work I do. So some of the artists, can I, am I audible? Yes, we can hear you, Shikha. Okay, okay. So uh, here, like I've, I've photographed more than 400 poets in this country and writers. Um, uh, I've been photographing families uh, for uh, this long. Uh, essentially, a lot of families is what my main work is. But yes, I've done a lot of portraits. You'll see a lot of black and whites here, but don't think I take only black and white. It's just that I am known for my black and white and I love black and white. So I'm sharing a lot of black and white work uh, right here. Uh, babies. Um, you know, these are musicians that I'd shot for their covers and uh, uh, their portraits. Now, uh, that was a very quick thing because I can go on and on 20 years of work and keep showing you my work. But other thing that people ask me when I show them a lot of my work is when they see it, they ask me, are you sure that this is taken by an iPhone? And a lot of times when we see these billboards of iPhones and we see the advertisements and we wonder that are, are they sure that these phones, these pictures have been taken by iPhones? And my answer is yes. The pictures I'm going to show you now are all done by phones during my travel. They are my family pictures. And, um, you know, uh, I usually carry my camera, uh, my phone everywhere and try to take pictures. So on my travel, I use them. Um, that's my son and his reflection. Um, and, uh, these are again uh, family pictures. Though the last one is a poet, I shot it for a poster. Um, so all these pictures have been taken with the phone. And uh, yes, there's no magical button. Yes, I'm a photographer and I have the sense of light and other things that help me to take these pictures. But none of them actually, the pictures you saw seen uh, before this uh, and uh, these pictures that I'm showing you, none of them have actually used any apps or gadgets also. So I must uh, say that, okay, that so I, will be, I will be uh, sharing a lot of apps and gadgets uh, uh, lists, but first we need to find the photographer in ourselves. That's the most important part. And then today we are very lucky that we have phones that can take great pictures. And the pictures that I've just shown you are all taken by phones from the time I wrote the pictures from phones. The last four slides were all done with my iPhone and most of them without any um, support from any apps. Only in-camera app has been used to convert them into black and white. So the whole, the whole mission is uh, for us to start seeing this. And these images is what makes a huge difference into our social media presence. Because now, you know, we are coming into an era where we are told that in our social media presence, be authentic, use your, your stories, your daily life, uh, connect to people. And then we always take pictures and then we get lost uh, that why, uh, you know, nobody saw it or liked it or commented. Usually the content has taken so much time to write, but maybe, you know, when they were scrolling through the picture just didn't make them stop to see the real essence of what you had written into the content. So that's why we decided to do this uh, workshop live right here. Um, so recently I've uh, come up with this concept called the visual break, which is actually the stepping stone uh, for you to start taking great pictures in life. Um, I did a challenge uh, in January where 100 people joined me on WhatsApp. And all I told them was take five minutes break daily to start connecting to things around yourself. And I gave them tips and then they participated and we had more than 700 images uh, with us uh, to uh, choose from as winners. Um, the whole concept of visual break is that in today's time, we have started you know, seeing and visualizing everything in our mind. But the world around us is constantly changing. Uh, we think we're in a lockdown we think we're in the same place. We think that things have not changed, but um, everything, even when we're in a lockdown is changing, the light is changing, the season is changing, the faces are changing, the garden is changing. Every single thing around us is changing. It's just we're so occupied into our daily routine and things that we do that we, we don't see that. 
and for good or for any kind of warnings of health and everything everything changes you know when we say that um, you know uh, suddenly somebody is not well and we say how did it happen we they were absolutely fine their faces would have been changing over last three days and you know you so the visual break is very important to come back to reality to start to start seeing things that are changing around us uh, to start connecting to it and then when you have the tools of photography with you you can step up and just bridge the gap between what you see and what you want and connect it to your content and what you really want to show to the world and then that dream picture comes out because you have the tools with you the skills with you and the most important thing that is needed is the presence the presence of mind being available right there and it starts by taking just that 5 minutes break like a exercise you know a visual break and why not take your cameras as uh, an excuse to start exploring that world uh, through uh, this visual break so that was the whole concept of visual break that i came up with and uh, of course phone has become a so i studied on a film camera i studied on a camera where we didn't even need batteries we just had to put a film and if we put the battery there would be some red light inside for our exposures but uh, even if we didn't if we knew our exposures well um we would get a picture because it would go to the dark room so i am from that era where that kind of photography is used so now so much more can be done with our phones but all we are doing is we're just snapping pictures constantly and buying more cloud space and just storing them up there and just using more and more space and then never going back to those pictures um and then when content comes and we want to write something then we are looking for something and then we are seeing what app can make it better can an can a graphic designer make this look nice so i would suggest that after this after this session uh, whatever you learn make a separate folder call my photographs the pictures that you think are great put them in that folder so that you can keep seeing your progress as a photographer plus all the good pictures are in good place and they don't get lost uh so that's one suggestion that i have but um, of course um as this slide says that good photos really really matter you know this is a an image consultant a friend of mine uh and uh, i i used her picture uh i did a professional shoot for her and here she doesn't have to always pose any professional i personally feel doesn't have to always pose against a white background standing there and you know smiling you know in a way you can just come out emerge in your pictures and start you know becoming real for people to start connecting to the real person because the online world is becoming real now for us um so i've already mentioned it briefly that why is it important yes for people to start scrolling and stopping but uh uh i've taken this picture this is a self portrait i've taken and i'm just trying to tell you this was taken in the same place but with little bit of editing and i was tired also and i had to take a post and i want to do a post but of course the right side got accepted more as a post than the left side did uh only not only because it's black and white but um uh, because of you know the posing the little bit of light change little bit of editing done to it so uh it really matters if you just take an extra step in the difference that it makes uh, in a picture um when you're doing uh you know social media posts so similarly this is a picture of room and uh, i just got it from the uh, internet and then this was taken by me uh this got more uh, reaction when i had posted on facebook and instagram um because it's the same place but this taken in a different angle um you know i always say this to people that when we go to tourist destinations uh we uh, like supposing we are in front of an eiffel tower and we try to take the whole eiffel tower and if you're not getting a great picture try to go closer to eiffel tower take the essence of eiffel tower because uh and then write a story on that so that people are intrigued about this part of eiffel tower that they've not seen and that's how your posts get boosted more people comment on it so that's how we have to start seeing an interesting angle with whatever we are trying to post and this was definitely start when we start taking the visual break as an exercise because till the time we don't start seeing there is no way we can start creating and that's the essence of life as well we have to start seeing before we start creating 
we need to emerge in all this buzz that's happening in our life because we are so busy. I'm a mom of two, I'm busy all the time, but that five minutes break somehow just rejuvenates me. And if I see a picture, I make sure that I take it and I put it in a separate folder and think about what I'm seeing because that says a lot about your pre present moment as well. Um, so National Geography, everybody has heard about it. But that's a magazine, it's a magazine, right? It's supposed to be selling a magazine and content. Uh, but National Geographic is one uh, magazine that spends a lot of, lot of money on um, photographers. And uh, the reason is because people buy that magazine because of the pictures. And pictures make you stop. It stands out. And National Geographic puts more money on photography equipment than any other magazine does. And I don't even have to say it that National Geography pictures stand out. It's in, it's, in, it's in our head now that if it's a National Geography picture, it is, um, it is going to be awesome because they heavily, heavily rely on the visual, visual attraction. And that visual attracts them, uh, people to buy stuff. And that's why they invest heavily. So the same concept comes to a social media as well. Invest a little time into the visual so that it attracts the people. And that gap can be done, uh, become closer and closer with a lot of, a little bit of technique that I'm going to just share in the coming slides. Mm -hmm. And the concept of seeing and practicing your visual ability to see every day. You will be amazed. And I know it's happened again and again. People have messaged me, Shikha, we did this five minutes visual break every day. Yeah. And we have, there's a huge yeah. difference in um, the whole, uh, the whole, pictures that have changed the way we are seeing things. And it's also making us very meditative with pictures. Pictures uh, start becoming your friend rather than just a thing that you need to take to put a post next to your content. Um, so before I start the session, um, in the chat, uh, can you just like people, can you just type and say, People who've already been with me in my photo challenges or photography workshop, don't type. But the ones who are new here, can you just quickly tell me what does photography mean? Like what the word photography, don't Google what you know, just put it in the chat. Let's hear from you. And Mike will have to help you with the chat. I can't see the chat. Yes, I'm, I'm on it. I'm on it. Yeah. So just, just tell so me what does photography stories, mean? Stories, capturing light, somebody says. Okay. Okay. Okay, bring it in, bring it in, guys. Memories. Mm. For me, it's capturing moments, getting memories. Photography, photography is memories, connection Lovely. between cultures. Moments. Melanie, you're still writing uh, only to me. You have to change and write to everybody. Uh, memories, rem remembering your loved ones, expressions, the world through my eyes, beauty. Okay. Beauty from my eyes. Freezing nature. Oh, that's, that's um, interesting. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's it, Mike. Uh, wait. Nadia said, memories and reminds me of what that moment feels like. So it's it comes to feeling. That's a good one, Nadia. Memories are connected with that. Photography is connected with feelings, right? Capturing moments. Emotion, emotions to be saved for future. Capturing emotions, and that's a good one too, right? Capturing emotions. <laughs> if you say to someone, how do you capture emotion? And somebody doesn't know we're talking about photography, they will be like, what are you talking about? <laughs> All right. So, cool. so, so photography, um, 
So most of us have written uh, capturing moments, right? We've written capturing moments in uh, the chat. Uh, but that's what photography does. Photography creates moments for us. Photography helps us capturing the things around us, our feelings, our emotion. But when we hear, when the word photography comes, it means painting with light. That's what photography means. Photography means painting with light. Please write this down as the most important thing because photography is an art uh, that becomes better and better the better your light gets. Uh, and, uh, and just to make it very obvious that painting with light, if there's no light, there's no photography, right? If there's no light, uh, you can't see anything. So we need to have light for photography. And photography does mean painting with light. So we, we need to uh, be very mindful of this meaning to start creating great pictures. We have to start, uh, you know, recently somebody, somewhere I read the light gatherers event and it turned out to be a photographer's event, but that's what it is, the light gatherers, you know, we, we literally gather light and we move forward with that. So uh, from now on, I am going to start sharing sharing um, the, the stuff that you need. Before this was always why of photography and how. Uh, now I'm going to do the how. But before I start this, can everybody get up from the seat right now? I'm giving everybody three minutes. And I know there are different time zones and the lights are not so great. But whatever picture that you, whatever picture that you see closest is nice. Just take this three minutes visual break right now and come back to your seats uh, while I wait for you and Mike, give me a heads up when we are back. Um, uh, and come back with only one picture that you see, which is awesome around you. And later you can share it in the group so that I can have a look at it as well. So let's make it a little hands-on. Let's make it not just listening to, we all listening to do many presentations all the time. So let's go ahead. Okay, we're standing up guys, moving around a little bit. You had a chance. Just close by. Just go three. Just for the hands-on experience. Hands-on experience, but emerge to stop thinking and just start seeing. That's what we need to do. Okay, I'm putting my timer on, guys. We got yeah. just literally two and a half minutes or only. Go and get a photo. Go and get a photo. <laughs> Uh, I'm I'm joining in from the other phone as well, Adia, uh, so that I can see people as well because I'm talking to a screen, which is so. Oh, everybody's really gone. Oh, everybody's really gone. Yeah, everybody's really gone. Awesome. Okay, I have my photo ready. Nadia is pretty, this is really taking yeah, it yeah, seriously, I can see. She's very engaged. <laughs> she wants to win. What are the prizes, Fika? <laughs> okay, we're going to give it one more minute, guys. Okay, one more minute for the picture. And then we're going to hear from Shika about light. All right. So, what you're doing at the moment is called your painting with light yes not not yet they will start painting very soon the echo is still coming because of the second uh, thing uh there's e echo i think when you when you join with your other phone shika i think you have so to i'll have, i'll leave i'll leave i'll leave that i'll leave that okay is it okay is it better mike yeah yeah i i hear you well Yep. Everybody can uh, let me know in the chat if the sound is okay. There's no yeah, it's, it's echo okay. anymore. Yeah. 
there are two phones. So when they're back, Mike, let me know because I can't see anything. It's okay, I'm just gonna mute everyone here just to make sure that there is no distraction. Okay, yeah, we're good. Seems like people can hear us. All right. Everyone back? I think I think uh, we can start back. Let's let's go. Let's sit down, guys. Let's just try uh, chat. Everyone back? Yes, 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 yes. Quickly, so that we can go to the next slide. And now it's going to get more and more interesting. Yeah, From here. we got Ellie's ready. And chat is ready, Melanie. All right, yeah. Well, Shika is connecting with iPad, and that's why it's it's very hard to have a face and the slides at the same time. Yep. Okay, seems like we have everybody. We got ready, ready, yes, 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 yes. Okay, Shika. Okay. I think we can move on. Okay, everyone. Um, quickly in the chat, can I um, can I uh, hear from people? How many of you will gift this picture as a gift for your friend's living room for their birthday parties? Or for a birthday party, like their birthdays. How many of you are going to gift it? I want to hear. Yes or no? Be be very true to yourself right now. It's about learning. If you're not like just don't think that I have to say, just think that is this picture that you've taken today, are you going to go and gift it as one of your best pictures taken till today? I want to hear how many of, because I was, I can't see your work. Usually I do this okay. on WhatsApp and I can see it. So we have uh, so far, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> One, yes. I'm glad it's coming. John is very happy with her picture. Oh, lovely, lovely, Dion. Dion. I would love to see that picture later. Yeah, I would love to see that picture. Yeah, Dion, you, have, you gotta share on social media. Who said yes has to have to post it on social media now. Okay, lovely. <laughs> for, for, so far, we only have one yes. And okay. no, no, no. Nadia, Nadia was very competitive. She said maybe. <laughs> okay. okay. I'm quite happy with my picture, but I knew what's going to happen next. So I, I sort of. I was prepared. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it seems like most of us are not really that happy with the picture that we took. Okay, so the point I was trying to get here is this is exactly what we do with our social media posts all the time. We just get up in the middle of a busy day and we are, uh, our, our senses and our eyes are still not, uh, the exercise of visual break is not reached there that we can start seeing stuff happening around us. And then we post. And, you know, I just ask you guys, are you going to spend money on this particular picture and, and gift it? Most of you said no. And we are using these pictures for our businesses. We are using these pictures to attract people on social media. This is how we are operating with our phones on a daily basis. And that was the idea of this exercise that um, you just stop doing that uh, because that's where, you know, the gap is coming into standing out in this very, very busy, crowded, noisy place. And pictures do have power. So slow down a little, start emerging, just pay attention, just get a little skill and there'll be a huge difference uh, in your pictures. Um, so yes, Light being the most, <clears throat> uh, light is the most important one. Uh, Shika, we lost, yeah. we lost uh, audio yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. I, There's something in my throat. So, oh, okay, um, no worries, no worries. Have a sip yeah, of water. So that, yeah, I just did that. So light being the most important part of photography, as I mentioned, painting with light is what photography means. We have to, have to, have to pay attention to the light. Now, it's very easy for me as a photographer to say that this is that light, that is that light, this is good light, this is bad light, this is not light. You know, all of you will be like, we don't know what you're talking about, Shita. Uh, it takes time. Light understanding and grasping takes time. 
uh, even after 20 years today, sometimes I look at a particular light and it's like, wow, I've never shot this kind of a light. So it takes time. But it's very important to start from uh, knowing your light. If the light is bad, try and not take pictures. And how do you recognize different kinds of light is what I'm going to talk about now um, in the next slide. So there is hard light, there is soft light. Now, how do you recognize a hard light? Uh, every time there's a shadow anywhere, which is very demarcated, which is very, very like if there is a shadow of a building, which is very strong and very uh, demarcated and very, uh, you know, the edges are very hard. It's usually hard light, okay? And a hard light could be a source of sunlight and hard light could be a source of bulb light and hard light could be a source of your phone light and there can be n number of hard light. But if it's creating shadows that are very hard, you recognize that as a hard light, okay? Now, I will not say that hard light is a bad light or um, you should not use it. You when you see the hard light, then you, there's a reason why you use the hard light because it makes and evokes certain kind of Im images and emotions in you. So, so like this is all hard light, you know. Um, like this poster I photographed, she uses this particular picture, though I've shot other pictures of hers also for her poster because she gets a lot of, um, the, the musician I'm talking about, it gets a lot of place to do a poster around it. Um, the gentleman in the middle is a poet. Uh, he, you know, he writes a lot of stuff that is, mis you know, it causes the mystery and he wanted a very mysterious picture. So hard light always, because you, you can see something and you can't see something, will always have a mystery. So when you're trying to create a post, where you're trying to figure out who, why, what, what's happening, why is happening, all that. Hard light does help you. So, you know, again, what are you trying to do with your pictures is the kind of light you need to use. So if you, if you see hard light, try and use it as a mystery or as uh, something that creates patterns. So this is all done by my students. Purposely, I put my students' work as well. Uh, it also adds a lot of texture. So like, again, I will not start talking like a photographer, shadow, light, this, that. All the dark parts that you can see is generally shadows to make it very simple for everyone. And all the, the, the light part that you see is a highlight. So if I'm talking about shadows and I'm talking about highlights, this is what it is. And the, the darker the dark part is, the more the texture will show. So sometimes we are trying to do uh, some uh, buildings and it looks very flat and sometimes the light changes and the hard light comes in and suddenly the texture and all the grooves and the windows, everything gets, you know, these demarcations of black and the building stands out. So that's um, how you recognize a hard light. So hard light is for mystery. It's for many things, but I don't want to keep confusing you by using all the jargon like photographers because we are starting, this is a starting point. So understand when you see hard light, move a little, try and use it, and then make a post around it that causes a little mysterious stuff. And again, I'm using a lot of black and white. It can be done in color. It's just that I have a habit of always choosing black and white. I love black and white, that's why. Um, any questions regarding hard light before I move on to soft light? Okay, if I can, guys, uh, I just mentioned here in the comment section, uh, when Shika is talking about hard light, hard light over here and then soft light comes later, I want you to think about emotions that it uh, inspires, emotions that it brings to the surface. Because yep. as we mentioned at the beginning of the session, when it comes to social media, we are driven by emotions, right? Certain emotions are causing the actions causing us to stop, causing us to, to read, to stare, to click the button or do whatever else, right? So now that we're breaking it down to these, to these different techniques, think about, okay, what kind of emotions that creates when you've seen these pictures? If you, Shika, if you can just move back a few slides to the, uh, so we can see the pictures one more time. Uh, okay, I'll have to go back one second. Yeah. There you go. 
you know, have a look at it one more time because this is this is all about emotions, right? So what kind of emotions these kind of photos inspire, right? And then you can start using it on purpose and not just by accident, right? Yeah, so photography, um, uh, unless you have a story attached to it, emotions attached to it, generally, you know, it doesn't connect to people. So that definitely is a background of all pictures that you, um, you take. So this was, this was hard life. And then I promise to not uh, make a session very, very long. That's why I'm also moving on. But I'm available for any questions at the end of the sessions as well. Mm. So soft light again. Um, so when you hear the soft, the, the word soft light, uh, you know, you can see all the shadows on the left, on the middle, everywhere. It's a very soft, it's not a very demarcated shadow. The shadow is the dark part. Again, I'm simplifying it. A lot of time when I'm teaching people say, we don't know what the shadow is. Yes, we know what shadow is, but we don't know in photography. So if you see it on the left, the baby, back of the baby uh, has this darker, little slight shadow coming on it, which is very soft. Um, and similarly on the face of the baby in the middle, the shadows are very soft. If I would have shot this in a hard light, it would have made his eyes go black. And that would have been the mystery part. Why are the highest I do, right? So to add this dreamy feeling, a lot of soft light is used. And yes, I am going to take the, use the word reflector. We do a lot of reflection and we reflect a lot of light, but don't, um, don't get very uh, confused with it. Um, just know this much that you can create soft light by putting curtains in front of your, you know, uh, if a light is coming through, just pull the curtain and then you can see through it. The shear, you can see, soft light falling on faces. Uh, take the subject with little indoors and if the light is very bright outdoors, a lot of uh, light will reflect back inside on the faces. If you're shooting faces, I'm a portrait photographer. So you're seeing a lot of portrait work. That's the same thing applies in food, in uh, you know the gardens and everything. So soft light generally adds a lot of dream and that dream is what we are trying to get through our posts a lot of times. So if you're trying to have a very dreamy kind of a content where you're trying to take uh, your people to a, through a journey, don't try and use hard light because if the connection doesn't happen, uh, make the situation and the post such or the light such that it, it softens the whole thing and that emotional journey can be taken with that visual effect. So again, soft lights, you know, these are all so examples of soft light. It evokes emotions. You want to stop and see what's happening. And because all of us uh, have different, uh, we are in different places in our mind, we relate to different kinds. Mothers might relate to this picture. There might be another soft picture of food and uh, somebody is craving for food and they might you know, relate to that as uh, a, a great emotion. So like hard light is very hard hitting uh, and very uh, you know, mysterious uh, uh, and uh, it, gets textures, soft light does the opposite. It takes away a lot of texture. It gives a very soft emotion. If you know, when you're doing family pictures or you're doing pictures that have emotional stuff attached to it, try and even flowers, you know, so if try and think that you shoot a flower with a hard light, you know, it's going to look very dull. It's not going to look very beautiful. So even if it's a garden picture, you are into the in, into a coaching business of gardening, try and you know, get a thermocol or get a chart paper, just put it near the flower and just reflect some more light so that that hard light goes away. So that's one way of making it a little soft. Uh, but you see a lot of uh, portraits from my side because I'm a portrait photographer. Um, Shika, if I can again, stop you for a second because I yeah, wanted please. to I wanted to go back to the to the comments, guys, that you put in, you put in. Please. I asked please, every, please, please. everyone to share what kind of emotions uh, the soft light inspires, and here's what we've got uh, over here in the comments. Uh, it, it, it feels gentle, silence, peaceful, comfort, relaxing, happiness, joy, beautiful, calm, uh, warm. And uh, yeah, that's for the soft, the soft light. So again, guys, think about uh, right now for a second as a marketer. As a, and a purpose, when, when, when you're putting your post out there, right, and you're plugging in your pictures and you want people to feel certain things, 
right? You want them to feel joy, happiness, maybe dreamy, right? Then you want to have a soft light, right? Now, if I scroll a little bit higher over here and I ask you, what did, what did you feel when you were see, looking at the hard light photos? And, and uh, somebody said over here, Nadia, I think she said, you were feeling uh, curious, yeah? yeah, curiosity, right? Intensity. And those kind of feelings are also good for social media. Not only we want to like people feel dreamy, but sometimes we want to feed them to like feel a little tension, right? That also attracts yeah. people. So yeah. you just need to make sure make sure that you know what's your goal, what's the purpose, and then you can use both hard light and soft light, right? But you know exactly what kind of feelings you want to uh, create in people, okay? So thank you so much for sharing. Now you have a lot of different different perspective on you know what people feel when they look at the soft light, soft light, right? So. Uh, that's that's really good that you're sharing over here. Whenever I'm going to ask you guys to share something in the comments, please do so. I will pull it all together later on so you can have like a little rubric and you will see how that looks like from different perspective of all the people that were here today. Okay, thank you so much. All right, Shika, back to you. So, um, so uh, the hard and soft light like is, uh, these are basic hard, soft and reflective lights are the kind of lights we deal with. But I'm not touching on reflective because this is a very first baby step into the world of photography and I don't want to confuse people. But um, understand that hard, you know, the hard light and soft light both can be natural light and they both can be uh, artificial light. It all can be created artificially. It all can be done naturally. Um, it all emerges all around us. It would be a great exercise to actually go back after the session whenever you're free, uh, before you start taking your five minutes visual break to start you know, meditating on pictures around yourself. Start recognizing shadows, just see them. You don't even have to take pictures. A lot of times the visual break doesn't have to be taken by just uh, taking pictures straight away from the photos. Start walking in your garden, see things around, recognize this is hard light and soft light and eventually, slowly and gradually, when you start taking pictures, you'll be very conscious of what you're doing. So that is one thing that you can do. Um, now, again, when I use the word composition, uh, like again, people tell me, Shikha, oh, you're a photographer, that's why you know what composition is and please tell us in a simple way. So I've tried to simplify um, the composition bit uh, uh, for all of you as simple as I can before without throwing a lot of these technical words and trying to show that oh, I'm a photographer for 20 years. Um, so composition is basically nothing but the way we place the most important part in our picture in the whole canvas that we have of our uh, picture. So uh, it could be, I'm just giving an example. Uh, it could be a crowd walking together, but one child might be the most important part if you're talking about something in which you're trying to show the crowd and the child, Some if you're trying to do that story. Uh, how do we place that child? Where do we place it so that the whole attention goes to the child is composition? If you're trying to shoot a caterpillar, how do we compose that between all these leaves, the straight away the attention goes to the, uh, the caterpillar uh, is what we need to do. Uh, and the best way uh, to do this is right now, I'm going to tell you to open any image, like any image on Google, any image, uh, like this, this Google any image right now for two minutes and just shut your eyes, just close them and just open and see what's the first thing that you see on these all celebrated images. Just like, what do you see the first thing when you see it and just put it in the comment. When you close your eyes and after 20 seconds, open it and you will see the most important part. You'll be sucked into the most important part. And if there's nothing important and composition is not great, your eyes will keep moving up, down, up, down, up, down. And that's why brain never processes anything. So try doing this for two minutes. Mike, when it comes to the chat, let me know once it's done. Sorry? Once the chat starts, I would love to know what they all feel when they open that one image. 
Okay, uh, can you can you repeat one more time uh, to, so everybody everybody will get because I've seen. Uh, I'm just going to stop one second. I'm going to stop the broadcast. I need to show like I need to one second. I'm going to just stop the broadcast so that I can now start seeing the people because I've been mm -hmm. seeing the blank screen and I I don't know who I, what's happening on Facebook. Okay, so what happens with composition? Okay, I'm placed here in front of you, right? Should I be placed here? Or should I be placed here in a picture? Or should I come very close? Or should my eyes be in a particular way? That's what composition is, when you're trying to place your subject in a particular way, okay? And what the exercise was, that all the great pictures, any great picture that you see, will take your, take your attention straight away to that picture if it's a well-composed picture. So the exercise was to just get out, go to Google, do natural geography pictures, do any one picture and just Google that and close your eyes and open after 20 seconds. After 20 seconds, open your eyes and see in that picture, what's the, what's the first thing you see and does it catch your attention or your eyes keep moving between two, three things in the picture? That's what I want to know. So when you see that one picture that you've chosen, does it keep moving? Your eyes keep moving at different places or does it take your attention straight away to that one important thing in that picture? Yeah, do the exercise guys, you can use your phones. It's a hands-on workshop here, guys. So it's best if we can actually have yeah. some feedback from you over here, then you will actually see how that, how that works in real life. It's very important. I'm purposely doing it so that I can connect you to visuals by the time you leave from here. Any one image, just take any one image. Don't choose, uh, wait for images, just any one image and see what you want to see. But take a professional image so that we know what we're talking about. Okay. Adit, so did you see getting connected to one? Adit is uh, Anchal. Anchal, did you um, connect to that subject in, in the thing or was your eyes going here and there? Because you're taking no. the best. No, no, no. I went to the National Geographic, saw the girl, only the eyes were captured, then saw the eyes were. I mean, that I yeah. work, uh, the first thing was, I mean, you really, it doesn't really capture the essence was what was below the sea. So it just captures yeah. what you need to see. So that, that's, I think that's what we have been missing in our, so even, our I, I, yeah, Mel yes. You know, what happens uh, is that when a picture is very well composed and your message is very clear through your visual pictures, even if you try going outside that focus place, it will get you back to it. They keep getting you back. Try with close eyes, with more pictures. If the picture is really good, it will keep taking you back to that, that subject, that one thing that is that is so laser sharp focused, not in terms of focus of camera and sharpness, but the way it's placed. It will keep taking you back. And that's what composition is. That's what a good composition is. And that's why most of you in National Geographic are not finding a problem and your eyes are not wavering. There's no confusion. What is the important part? What is that one thing? And most of the time when we're shooting and we're doing social media posts, we don't realize that, yes, we're shooting this and then the background, something else is peeping in and then something else is happening in the corner. And then the person is trying to be there for two seconds or three seconds or four seconds on your post and it's gone all over and not got connected to any of your things and they've just gone back. They're like, okay, we'll read it later. You know, because I don't know what they're talking about. But if your picture was labeled laser sharp, your, your composition was amazing. It's straight away draw them without they knowing it, what you're trying to say. And then they will um, they will go ahead and say, now I want to read about this. What are they talking about? Because this is what they're talking about. They're not confused about what they're talking. So composition helps us. Yes, light does. But just because light is great and composition is all over, you know, it can create a lot of um, 
So I think this exercise, can I just have a quick chat because I am trying to make it interactive. Yes, 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 got the point. We can move forward. Got the point, got the point, raise your hands, got the point, then I can go and start sharing the, perfect. Mm. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So you all got the point. Uh, this is a great way of doing your visual exercise um, before you start shooting so that you start seeing because the seeing is a first step of any great picture. So let's move forward. Um, uh, Shika, if I, can, if I can just uh, steal one second over here because I, 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 I wanted yes. to show you guys something um, over here. You see behind me uh, is, uh, is my backdrop and uh, and I wanted to show you this, uh, like what color does to the composition, right? Yeah, yeah. So sometimes you've seen those pictures that are black and white and only one thing is in color, right? That sort of like brings your attention to that, that thing, right? On the picture. So even if the picture is busy by playing with the colors, you can pretty much like put the focus on, on some specific part of your picture, right? Yes. Um, I don't know whether I should tell this to them, Mike, but your parents were photographers. So Mike is also has the authority of being a child of photographers. So that's why Mike also has a lot of input in the visual right here. <laughs> Am I right, Mike? That's true. Bo both mom and dad photographers. So Yes. That's why Mike is also enthusiastic <laughs> about pictures right here. So um, I'm going to just share the screen now and uh, go to, we just, I'm going to take 10 to 15 minutes more uh, and uh, I hope people are uh, one second, taking something from here. Okay. So again, how do we change the composition? So it fully changes the picture and uh, looks and what it says. So now this is uh, the first thing in a composition that all of you can practice. These are my kids. And of course, this is a phone picture and um, they were just sitting and I wanted a plain background. And this is how I got it in the middle, a plain background by just changing the angle. So see, if you if you see these three pictures, um, you know, all the three pictures, just by changing the angle, it's changing the way the picture looks and the disturbances were deleted in the middle picture. And this was taken one after the other, you know, one after the other, these three pictures were taken. One was sitting down, one from top and one lying down where you see the reflection in the third. So the clutter got deleted by not moving the background, but moving yourself and moving your angles. Uh, so it's had everybody understood through this example that how by not trying to move, if Eiffel Tower is coming, we can't move the Eiffel Tower, but we, we can move ourselves and remove if it's becoming a problem in the background. So angle does that how we place our uh, camera. Do we sit down? Do we stand? Because we are very used to standing and taking pictures. But when you're not finding your pictures, just change the angle. Just change the way you're seeing it. Sit down, lie down, climb up, look down. Uh, and it'll change the angle. And maybe you come closer to what you're looking for and you find a lot of things happening. So that's one part of composition. Backgrounds is another part of composition. This is a pianist I, I photographed a few years back and we were outdoors and this was a graffiti wall. Now, every time you don't have to create backgrounds, you don't have to, and you know, this tool we were carrying for how to sit here and there on the streets when we were shooting in uh, Delhi, I, I saw this background, you know, and graffiti wall was there and she just sat there and the light was awesome and it worked well. So, Pay attention to your background. Look for the backgrounds. If you can't, if you find a lot of clutter happening, just look around. If you can find an interesting color wall, some graffiti around, curtains, uh, you know. So angle is one thing to change it. And then if you can find great backgrounds, pay attention to your background when you're taking pot. Again, a lot of my examples are coming from portraits, but all this apply to everything, to food, to plants, to street, everywhere. Uh, even in, uh, you know, food photography, uh, you will see, you know, sometimes you're trying to get a cup of coffee and you're trying to uh, show it's very hot, but it's getting merged because right above it, it's a white background and all the uh, steam and all is looking, is getting lost. Just change your angle. If not, change the background. Let it go against a dark background and it'll start showing. So all these apply even 
to uh, your uh, food photography and other kinds of stuff that you all are trying to do. Children, uh, now children are very difficult to actually change, uh, you know, their backgrounds because they don't want to move. And the more you tell them that move, move, do this, do that, they get irritated and they just leave because I'm a baby photographer. So I know that not to mess with that particular part of, you know, their, this thing, if they're doing something, you change your angle, you know? So that's one tip. And then the background is very important. Pay attention to your background. So this is just the shadow background, but she was, you know, practicing, practicing her music. And then she suddenly started swaying. And then I used this as a background and I shot her picture. And then she used it for a cover uh, of her CD. Again, uh, if you see on the left, this garden, I actually went on the first floor because the angles I was trying to shoot when I was on the ground floor, uh, there was a lot of stuff happening behind the plants and other things which were disturbing. All I did was I went upstairs and I put my camera down, looking down, and I took these two pictures with both these girls at different points in time. Uh, and this just cleared up the background for me. It's just plain green background and suddenly she stands out and no matter what you do, you will keep going back in spite of those flowers looking at her face. So, you know, composing it in a way to clear your background sometimes. Yes, cluttered background works, but it is a little tough. It takes a little time to get used to those cluttered background and using them for your advantage. But try and clear your backgrounds and that makes a very clear post for sure. So this is a cluttered background both the places uh, but again uh, the way i've placed it i've placed it in a way that again the eyes are going to go and that's because of the color break the pattern break from the nature she's just sitting right in between and the angle i've taken uh, on the left if i would have gone straight i would have not got the same picture as i've got now so on the right i'm actually climbing up on on the chair and I told my assistants to start doing this because, you know, the background was disturbing me on the side. So I had this white cloth and two of them are just swinging the white cloth outside my camera side. So that that takes away all the clutter that was there, which was a night lighting and takes the attention to her. And the whole feel of movement comes through the cloth. So patterns is uh, yet another, uh, you know, uh, Thing that we can use to make our posts because it definitely stops. Now, pat these are done by my students. So patterns are basically uh, uh, there everywhere. But only thing you need to you need to understand when you're doing patterns is are you going to shoot a repeated pattern that keeps repeating, or it starts from somewhere and keeps decreasing, or uh, it keeps increasing like one dot. Uh, two flowers, two dots, four flowers, five. So it just keeps increasing. So these are different kinds of patterns you can do. But what works really beautifully, what Mike was just talking about, take a black and white and then do a color. In the right picture, the green and the red is doing the same thing. The pattern of green broken by white, that one red tomato. And that works very well. Uh, so try and use the pattern and then break the pattern, you know, to make your point. So you can have multiple stuff and the point that you're trying to make, break it with a pattern. That's another way of composing your images. Silhouettes, sunsets. Uh, again, there are silhouettes can be of all, not only during sunsets, but if there's a bright light outside, you put the shear, you put the curtain, and the person is standing in front of it. Um, those are also silhouettes. So silhouettes are great ways of telling story and getting the mood. Shrika, we lost you for a moment. Well, I, I can see that Shika's battery is only 8%. <laughs> Hopefully she's gonna, she's gonna be back in a moment. Uh, so I'm gonna use the, use the time to tell you guys, uh, this is almost fin the, the, the final slides of the session. Uh, right after this, we actually planned for some uh, Q&A. So hopefully Shika will connect with her phone. Uh, as far as I know, she was able to do that. Um, so let me just see if I she can reconnect with us. Mm. You can let me know in the comments in the meantime, guys, which part of the session 
uh, was a aha moment for you? What you've learned today? Let's just have a recap over here so everybody can have uh, like a final conclusion. What's important about photos, especially uh, looking from a perspective of social media, taking them for social media for a certain purpose, right? I mentioned that in the comments above that uh, I always recommend to, to do the backward design thinking when you're taking your photo. So instead of thinking, okay, what kind of photo I wanna take, you wanna think about what kind of emotion I want to inspire in people when they will be looking at this photo, right? That's sort of like the, the biggest uh, idea, right? The, the purpose of taking the picture. Once you have, okay, I want people to be curious about something. So then you can start thinking, okay, so what I need to have, what kind of light I need in order for my photo to be, to inspire curiosity? What kind of composition do I need in order to inspire curiosity? Do I need to break the pattern or do I, do I want to lead them on to something, right? So all these, all these things, the, the elements that Shika is mentioning over, the, over here, patterns, silhouettes and light, right? And composition, all these are, so, are just tools that allows us to inspire emotion, right? Once you have the end goal, it's easier to pick the tool that works for you. Okay, let's see. I hope it's Shika reconnecting with another device. Yeah, Dion mentioned here, composition was great, never thought about it before. Kate, I'm really looking forward to writing post after this. Love the hard light, soft light Canva. Yeah, that's great, right? Uh, Learn about the essence of light and background in a picture. Mm, right. All of this is extremely beneficial. Well, that, what, that's well said, Melanie. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, uh, Avnas is asking about our sessions. So when it comes to sessions in School of Self Mastery, we having we're having sessions every two weeks. That's 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 the minimum goal that we want to hit. These the, the topics for the sessions are actually coming from the community itself. So we're listening to what you want to learn about, what is the element that you're working on and focusing on at the moment, and I'm trying to find the right experts, the the right mentors for you, bring them into the group and then uh, just extract, break their knowledge uh, so we can have the shortcut and go faster. And uh, using the moment while Shika is not here yet, uh, I just wanted to uh, remind you that uh, we actually already have a little lineup for the next session. And the guest speaker for the next session is actually in the house, Melanie Hibbert. She will be talking about mindset, right? So Melanie, maybe you can unmute yourself a little bit over here and give us a little a little teaser for the next week. Okay then. Okay, so um, next week I will be bringing to you um, five mindful strategies that you can use to instantly de-stress and release anxiety so that you can power through your week. Okay, so we're looking at five simple techniques that you can pick up and do and that will give you some instant relief in the moment that you are feeling either anxious or stressed or even overwhelmed. So that's the intention to be bringing to you next week, all going well. Awesome. I put you in the spot, but you did really well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. So as you, as you, uh, as you heard, uh, we are going to zoom into simple techniques that you can use in order to energize yourself or put yourself in a better mood, right? Change those emotions that are driving you throughout the day and, and just have better days, better moments. So then you can take better pictures, right? <laughs> All comes together. Oh, I think Shika is reconnecting right on time. Uh, okay, let's have a look at the... Hey, um, okay, sorry, so, I didn't know when I... 
no worries, no, no worries, Shika. We 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 uh, took over the microphone for a moment. I just wanted to answer just... one question over here about the sessions in the future, guys. So once you are inside the School of Self Mastery group, right? I was sending you uh, the link to the group in the chat. So if you're not in a group yet, then that uh, I'm going to send that link one more time over here in the chat. So just click at the link. It will take you straight to our group. Uh, once you're in the group, you will know about all the events that are happening. We're usually promoting them at least a week before, right? So like I said, normally we have them every second week, every second weekend. But sometimes if we have um, more, more guests and, and, and more topics, it can happen actually every, uh, every weekend. So I, I just shared the link in the comments you can all go there if you're not in school of self-mastery yet please do join and join our future sessions okay okay so uh, where did i go you. off you know i was i was talking and suddenly the internet went off because i couldn't see you uh, where till what point could you could i did i cover the thing uh, so we were we were all the way until silhouettes you were okay going through the silhouettes and and then when okay. that it was when we lost you okay so i'm going to start sharing the screen and uh i just think quick quick uh four five more slides there people i know that it's getting time but i'm going to just go there. so okay so I shadow the reflection, nobody could hear me, right? Yes, Mike? Yep. That's this is okay. where we lost you. This this is this was the last the slide that was supposed to be next. So uh, what I was just saying was that um, the the picture on the left, if there was no shadow, would have been a picture that nobody would have looked at or stopped at. So a lot of times use shadows in your composition in a way that it makes people stop. And again, a picture which is made, it's not made only by composition or only by light. It's a combination of composition, light, angles, uh, you know, situation, story, emotion. So in this case of the folk, there is a hard light, there is a plain background, and there is an interest to that, the way they've composed it, the jewel of third on the side. So uh, very important, so on the right, what I was trying to say was at that time that if you turn your faces upside down, you will see the shoe on the right hand corner of my son. So my son was sitting and his reflection was coming. And uh, sometimes you can make certain posts by, uh, you know, shooting reflections as well. Because it makes an interesting post for people to stop and start seeing what you're saying. This picture is just a pure picture. It is, there's no watermark used on it or nothing. Only a little bit of editing done, which is my next slide. That what is editing and what kind of editing, uh, you know, we need to do. So I'm going to go to the next now. So I'm a believer that uh, as a photographer and because I learned on uh, manual cameras, we never had an option of not taking a great picture. Either we take a bad picture or we take a good picture and that's it. There was nothing in middle. We... Uh, uh, we couldn't manipulate it too much into the dark room except making it a little dark and light or cropping it. Uh, so whatever we needed to do in those 36 frames was what we needed to do. And uh, that's why I don't take a lot of support of the pictures that you've seen till now of mine. Most of it is just pure pictures with very less editing that I would have done if I had dark room with me. So only converting the colors one into black and white and a uh, little bit of cropping. Usually I don't even crop my images. Uh, I try to make that image as close to as a uh, final image possible only because of the habit of being a manual photographer user. We just had 36 frames to do it. And then that's it, your maximum two frames, not like 2000 and choose one from it. Uh, but editing does make a difference. And the next slide shows it how. Uh, so previously I just showed you the reflection picture when originally I took it, this is how it looked, you know, can you see the shoe is very clear now, his reflection is clear, it's a very, the mystery is gone. 
and this particular editing i've done it in the in camera app of iphone which is available i i have an iphone i teach iphone but all androids also have uh, inbuilt camera editing uh, tools and i've just used a little of saturation a little bit of contrast and tried to make this mystery out of the picture so uh, when it comes to a social media posts uh like probably with my dslr camera i would not i could have done this easily on my dslr camera but sometimes you do need an editing uh you know to make that difference for it to stand out any questions till now on composition before i'm getting into editing sorry i didn't ask that time any questions on composition please you can type in in the chat guys if you have any other questions about compositions Composition shadow. Because we're almost coming to an end. And okay. No, I think I'll we can. Forward. I think we can move on. Especially that I have yeah. noticed that some of you guys uh, have some other things that you need to attend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just ending quickly. Uh, so um, again, this is a picture taken by my phone. then converted in the editing app because i wanted a little more light and then i one day wanted to convert it into a black and white these are all done in camera app so that's why sometimes editing is not all the time but yes sometimes editing does enhance a picture more uh, when it's taken with phones so do rely majorly you know on your editing thing and a lot of times you don't have to edit a lot just like there are 20 buttons you don't have to choose all 20 buttons to start changing it um just just uh, try and play with it and if you think you got what you got just leave it just don't go you know maybe more maybe sometimes it just ruins the picture more so the picture is composed already it's just the editing has changed this picture a bit for me um some of the editing tools that everybody who will get the uh, pdf will get all the little details and their logos of this particular list but i use the in camera app very often and rely on that uh for the editing and uh, you know there are many things like contrast brightness sharpness cropping i'm sure some of you have played with it but if you haven't please take your pictures and try and enhance it a little bit with the editing tools uh lightroom uh has come up with a free app for phone initially all the professional photographers use lightroom and it is better than the photoshop uh, of uh, the camera because photoshop is essentially a photographer's uh, app as well but uh, software as well but in the app lightroom is much better for the phones than than the photoshop is so snapseed is by google and it's again a great great software all these details are written that's why i'm not going to go too much into detail of what they do it's written in the pdf that i'm going to share touch uh, touch free touch Uh, um again if something is you know comes by mistake like a little um, so i'll just give you the touch we touch example um uh, so in uh, one second in uh, there's one particular picture this one uh this one on the right can you see on the left there's one switch board which is there which i can remove in that touch retouch as an app easily it's there right now i don't like i don't do too much retouching but if anybody is bothering the switchboard on the left it can be removed in the touch retouch uh, app easily so that's the touch retouch app um then um, uh the the rpl is a great it's not a very famous app but it's a great app which compiles a lot of pictures and makes a presentation and then it helps you in your social media posting as well so there are a lot of templates that you can use to do these presentations of your pictures sometimes you want to do three four pictures you can add music to it and also it schedules your mm -hmm. stuff online or for facebook and other social media stuff so that's another app that i use not so much for scheduling but for definitely making my short videos with my pictures Carbon is uh people who have iPhone is one of the most awesome apps uh, I have come across for black and white, and um, it has many many templates. Please explore Carbon if you are into black and white, which I am into. Mixture uh, again is about you know different kind of 
uh, textures being overlaid on your pictures and making a dreamy image or something like that. Um, and the most popular Photoshop, but I mentioned not for the for a camera, uh, the for the phones. It's for the camera basically, but the phone one is not so amazing. But yes, it's it's available. But Instagram is the most popular to edit. Instagram is also giving you endless tools to edit. Please use it uh, when required. Just don't use the filters, yellow, orange, green, blue. It does have contrast, brightness, other things to uh, make your pictures uh, look better. And the gadgets, which is a very, this is my last topic, um, which is a question that everybody asks me. So all the pictures you've seen till today, most of it, 90%, 99% has just been either a camera or a phone without any gadgets. Because gadgets and apps don't make a photographer. We make the photograph with our mind, with our ability to see, with our ability to see the light, composing. So don't, um, when somebody tells you that, oh, there's gadgets, without that, you can't become a photographer. All my career, 20 years, whatever pictures I've made, usually just with a camera, using available light, um, composing it, but Yes, sometimes you do need gadgets, like I'm launching a course for self-portraits for women entrepreneurs to help them to start taking their pictures. In that case, you need a tripod to keep it, or a stable uh, tripod. So again, here's a list of uh, tripods. I have put this all together in the PDF, which is going to be shared. And a tripod is a heavier version. Monopod is very, very light. The reason I'm going very fast on it is because we already passed our time. Gimbal is another really awesome one. Um, it does give you stable movie options. It's a little expensive, but if you have Gimbal, then you can make really nice documentary films out of your phones and then compile them in iMovies or other uh, video apps because Gimbal uh, protects you from a lot of shake that happens during little movies. Uh, selfie stick, not one of my favorites. It disturbs people. It's too long. It's been banned on a lot of tourist places because people fall off the cliff while taking selfie stick stuff because you don't know what you're doing. But yes, selfie stick is on the list of gadget. Gorilla pod is a must with everyone. Please, when you look at the PDF, I've shared a picture of the gorilla pod. It's actually like a spider kind of a tripod, which are in different sizes. Something that can actually uh, be only a five inch thing on which you can put your phone or some about 10, 12 inch, you can put a little heavy camera, but it's, um, you know, it's a flexible uh, three, all the three uh, stuff is very flexible, uh, the stand. So it can go and attach itself to anywhere, to a pole, you can rotate it. You will see it when you see it in the PDF that I'm sharing. Um, I'm still online, right? I'm not hearing any voice, that's why. Yes, yes, we can hear you. Okay. Perfect. So uh, lenses has become very popular with phones and some of the lenses are really nice. In the last five years of my teaching, the lenses that have been now launched are amazing. Um, you know, again, I show a macro picture that was um, uh, used by macro lens in iPhone. I should have, um, so uh, this one again on the left has been shot the, the bud of the viscous flower has been shot by a macro lens that I used on my iPhone. And that's how everything else behind us got blurred because it's a macro lens that go up close. It's actually a very small bud, but it's become beautiful and nice and clear. So lenses have become very popular. Um, and any, like I've shared about lenses, but there are many, many, many uh, available uh, in the market. So, if somebody wants to know which one I want to do it, I can put it up in the chat later. Uh, so I think uh, lenses and reflectors, um, a lot of amateurs use things like thermocalls and chart papers and white sheets, but there are a uh, silver, gold, black uh, reflector set available. Again, I put it in the list there that you can use to put more light, reflect light on your subject. All this is sounding too much. That's why I'm not wanting to confuse. The earlier slides were more important about the storytelling, the, the light, the composition was the important part. If you just start applying those, a little bit of these gadgets and app, I think you're done with great pictures on your social media and you will see a huge difference from what you've been shooting and what you've uh, 
you know done if you just apply these things and i think that's my thank you slide coming up and thank you mai before i end i also want to mention great work that mai and nadia are doing together for the refugee camp um they uh, they have a great uh, I, i think mike can speak more about it through the details and guide you towards this this thing but i've been supporting their efforts uh, of in malaysia for the refugee camp and my throat has gone talking so don't mind the host voice please um so thank you mike uh, and i think any uh, i think mike is starting a donation kind of uh, a system very soon which he can elaborate on uh and soon um, Um, I think I have to stop broadcasting so I can see all of you. And Mike has used the picture there. Now I can see the picture. So Mike, this is great work, Nadia. Great work going. Lot of effort going in. And I would love all of us to support them in any way. And the last but the, not the least, um, I am also launching the course very soon. And I'm going to try and take the first eight people who raise their hands into that course before I launch the course, so that. uh i can take them through this whole thing because as the first time i'm launching it online and the first eight people who will raise their hand would be the first batch and there is a special prize for them everything will be more detailed than what is going to be in the main course so that's one offer that i'm offering and then my thank you slide is already gone and my voice is gone so i'm sorry uh -huh. i can't speak it it's been too long so i hope you got something out of this session i would love to hear your feedback Thank you so so much Shika for this awesome delivery guys if you have uh, any final thoughts or conclusions or just want to say thank you to Shika just drop it down in the in the comment section I just wanted to uh, reinforce that Shika will be starting her own program I was encouraging her for so long because she has so much more to offer than just what she showed today and like i said it's not nothing better than having someone who can actually just answer all your questions when you get once you're going to be walking through this path right so if you if you do want to uh, follow up with shika she will be staying here a little bit longer for q and a guys the official session is 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 done uh, and if you want to know a little bit more about her program or how else she might help you on the on the go or have any other questions about how to make your photos for social media better then uh, you're welcome to stay and now have your questions i just wanted to uh, thank you uh, one more time to everybody who was with us live or who was watching from uh, facebook i was showing to you uh, our crew of children from the refugee center that she can mention uh, so this is going this is something new this is a, an idea that i have from my dear friend uh John Graham she met he he told me that you know Mike you're doing all these sessions and supporting all these people and and I feel like uh, your kids could have something out of that you know so uh just to just to give you a quick uh, explanation we are running a refugee center for these kiddos over here that you see on the picture um we have over 50 of them today and i realized that since we will be doing these sessions regularly regularly every second week at least uh, we will offer a chance for everybody who is joining us to support us and donate small amounts of money for these people this is not compulsory this is for only for those of you who would resonate with our mission helping children to get education uh, children who have no access to any formal schools or any formal institutions uh we we took them in uh, to our little house and our little center and we're doing everything we can to support their development so i'll be leave, leaving you a link in a moment over here uh to paypal if you have uh, if you have um if you're willing to support uh, them we will share our uh, next adventure for this month we are supporting we were trying to collect money for a trip to the zoo so we have a big topic for the kids they're learning about animals and about habitats and how how it's all connected and we would like to take them to the zoo if we're going to have enough sponsors and about contrib enough contributors uh, we will be sharing that trip on social media and you will see how you supported their education so with that being said uh, that's pretty much all guys 
Thank I'm you so, so much. I will be, I'll, I'll share the, the, the link over here that you can use uh, for, uh, for the, the small donations, right? And all of you who would want to stay for Q&A, you're, you're, you're welcome to stay with us. The rest of you, thank you so, so much. Obviously, I will reach out to every single one of you who was here and who was watching on Facebook to deliver your bonuses. You're going to get two bonuses, one from Shika and the other one from myself. I'm just going to show you really quickly what it's going to be. Um, so here you see a part of my course, Build Your Brands on Social Media. One session in this, uh, in this course is especially uh, interesting and sort of related with this topic that we were talking about today. And this is this session over here, what uh, should be on your profile photo and how to create a good profile photo. It's not a very long video, but it's very informative. And you'll know exactly what you should do and how you should put, uh, take a picture of yourself, what kind of things you have to think about in order to make this profile work for you on social media. So this session together with Shika's uh, list of gadgets and apps. Gadgets and apps. Dry, we will go to you right after the session. I will reach out and send to you everything on your messenger or, or other ways. Okay. Thank you everyone for being there. All right, guys. So at this point, um, if you get, if you have any other questions, I've noticed that there was two questions before. I'm just gonna get that link over here so you can. Um, one second. Oh, there you go. It died on me for a second. No way. Uh, oh, it disappeared on me for a moment. <laughs> Okay, I think it should work. Um, we have technical issues from both sides today, Shika. <laughs> uh, no. I can drop in uh, uh, the questions are there. If the questions are in the chat, then I can make a video and answer those questions and give it to you and you can send it to them. Uh, okay, I think this should work. I'm just gonna share this. I, I had it prepared, but for some reason it just uh, it just died on me. So I'm gonna drop it here, guys. Uh, later on, you can just simply reach out to me if that's not gonna work properly. You can reach out to me when it comes to uh, the education center if you want to know more about that project and if you want to support us in any way. Uh, I'm happy to answer all the other questions. And now let's just focus uh, on the questions. So uh, question number one from the top that I was uh, that I was reading on the go, Shika, was about food photography. Uh, but I am trying to reach back to there what exactly um, that person wanted to know about that. Um, Okay, one, one, one over here before I scroll all the way to the top. Is there one gimbal brand that is best? I look at, the, at them and Amazon has overwhelmed some stabilizers and uh, stabilized and lack look better I, I, I'll others. share the link. I'll share the, there is, there is, I'll share the link uh, uh, with you, Mike, and then we can share it with everyone if they're interested to know about the gimbal because that's the best, uh, that's the best thing to invest in uh, for videos and stuff. So from the Amazon, I will take a link and I'll uh, add it to my list of the gimbal, the PDF mm -hmm. that I'm sharing. I'll add the, the name and the link there so that people can go there. I don't remember the, I don't remember the, the model number uh, that I use. Uh, so I'm going to do that and send it to the person who's asking for it. Right. I'm trying to find that. Uh... 
question so about, the, finding, I find it, yeah. about the food. Well, anyway, uh, just maybe just like a, a, a general uh, information when it comes to, to uh, food photography, what would uh, what would you uh,